What is up, YouTube? That's her today. I'm back for more Pokemon VDC 2023 regulation e-battles, and I'm bringing you guys another team building guide. You guys really, really, really liked the last couple team building guides I did, so I'm going to bring you guys another one and show you guys my full process for how I like to build my teams. Hopefully, you guys like it as well. Remember, the first thing we want to do is get the three things we want each team to do out of the way. After that, we find some mods that we want to use to accomplish those goals in-game. We add them to a defensive type chart, and then from there, we add all of our moves, we add all of our items, we add all of our our Eevees, all of our Terras, all that good stuff. We go into some flow charts. We actually test these Pokemon and these teams in some games. That's how I like to do things. So again, the first thing that I want this team to do, let's open up a little Word document and ask ourselves the question we ask ourselves every single time. What are the three things I want this team to do? Um, you know, these can be as vague or as specific as you want. These can be as specific as I want to use a specific Pokemon. I want to feature a specific mechanic or I don't want to lose to this or I don't want to lose to that. I think the number one thing I want this team to do, right? If we were to take a look here, the number one thing I want this team to do is utilize like easy to use speed control and feature um, the fastest Pokemon. And so I want to be able to actually get my speed control up and then surround that speed control with other fast Pokemon. So we're probably going to be using Tornadus today. So Tornadus can set Tailwind, but if I'm enabling a Tailwind on something like an Iron Bundle or a Regilecki and my opponent has a Tailwind enabling their Urshifu, we're going to be still going first in those situations. So we want to get up our Tailwind and then already still have speed control. So what that actually does is it means we don't even really need Torn a lot of the time. We can just have those bundles, have those Regilecki and those other fast Pokemon, force our opponent to bring their Torns and punish them for bringing it regardless of whether we bring Tornadus or not. So it's actually a really cool way to do this and I think it's going to be a pivotal part in this team's strategy. The second thing that I want to do on this team is actually have redirection. Um, here we go. Re direction. Now, I think redirection is pretty good in this format. There's a lot of big single target attackers right now. There's a lot of big priority spam. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of redirection, stopping those things like Urshifu's, Shempow's, Dragonite's, Arcanine's. I don't really don't want to deal with those things right now. Um, I think it's you make this team very, very simple and easy to play. So even a beginner could play this team and actually get some very, very good results. So redirection is going to be a pivotal part of this strategy. Whenever we're adding mods when we're adding things. We want to take both of these things into account when we're building. The last thing I want this team to do, right? Um, this is going to be something that I know I want to work on. This might be a little bit vague for some people, but I want this team to have uh, multiple S tier lead options. And so uh, what we actually like to do a lot of the times is break down like a full flow chart and go down like and rank every single leads being like S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier. That's what we like to do in a lot of these guides. And I want this team to have like a lot of S tier options. Normally you want at least three for a competitive team in my opinion. So you can have actually good solid options in games one, two, and three. Good teams usually have about five or more. I want this team to have like eight. I want this team to have like every single lead combination is like actual straight value that has like a specific purpose and takes a lot of resources to check from our opponents. Multiple S tier lead options are like a good sign of like a good, easy to use, well-made team that has a lot of different potential offensive pivots. This is also considered to be like a hyper offense team, I would say. So that being said, what are the mods that we can use to accomplish these three goals? Well. I think the the first thing is adding that speed control, right? So what I'm going to do is go into my game. Remember, the next thing I like to do after getting our goals written down on a Word document or a piece of paper is just go into my boxes. I like to just look around and see, like, what Pokemon are my boxes? What do we have to work with? What are the Pokemon that we can use to accomplish our goals? Remember, our first goal is have easy-to-use speed control. And so that's going to be speed control boosted by, like, prankster mons. Um, there are a lot of different prankster mons. There's also Talonflame for Gale Wings. Like, let's just go into Showdown for just, like, one second to show you every single mon um, that gets those moves. All right, so we got Prankster and Tailwind. Right, so Prankster and Tailwind. So there's there's a few of them that get it, right? There's also Talonflame, which has Gale Wings, which is a little bit different, but it is faster than these guys, just to know. So that being said, your choices are these four Pokemon, and obviously I think Tornadus is the best Pokemon out of that group for this specific team. So we're going to add a Tornadus to our team. Not this Tornadus, although I do I do like this Tornadus. Uh, it's not the one that we're going to be wanting to add to our team. This is, a, I think, one from Legends Arceus or something. And it was from Pokemon Go. All right, um, let's see, where else... Where else are we looking? We're looking for Tornadus. I'm looking forward to my boxes. 
And I, I should have more than one of these guys, right? There's another one of the other tornadoes. I do like that tornado. It's a lot in singles. It's a shame that thing gets, I think it's in like the NU tier now. Oh my gosh. I could just search for tornadoes and probably find it faster. Fine. I will search for tornadoes. All right. Pokemon species tornado. So this is just how I do it. You know, I like to get inspiration uh, from different Pokemon that are in my boxes. And there's Tornadus. And remember, this guy gets a Prankster Tailwind. It was in the next box, bro. <laughs> so Prankster Tailwind. Going to be pretty good stuff. Gets Prankster other moves as well. It's going to be pretty nice. The next thing that we wanted to use is still on that option one which is, if we go take a look back at this, gonna be um, you know easy to speed control featuring the fastest Pokemon. You might be thinking that would be using Regilecki. Regilecki is a bit of a hot pick right now. I think I just wanna use Bundle. I think I just wanna use Bundle. So um, I think Booster Bundle, uh, but Booster Bundle is still faster than Regilecki by the way. So that's, that's nuts. <laughs> that is nuts. So let's go uh, pick Iron Bundle here. All right, I got a couple of these guys. You know, I have I have a Scarlet, so it's hard to get these bundles. All right, so we're gonna use an Iron Bundle here. Um, and again, don't look at the move sets or anything. It's just standard Iron Bundle. Um, iron Bundle with that booster energy into speed, being able to icy wind things makes it so when I pair Tornadus and Iron Bundle together, I can click Tailwind. I can click Icy Wind. Even if you Tailwind me, I'm still gonna make you slower. And even if you get KOs on something, I'm just gonna be able to bring out some good mons in the back and have a really really good time. The last thing that I wanted to add, if we take a look at the little list that I had over here, was redirection. That's number two, right? We're going to be adding other fast Pokemon as well, um, things that can pair well with Bundle. But we want to add a little bit of redirection. So I think, you know, you could add things like Amoongus. You can add things like Pachirisu. You can add, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different mods that have redirection. Ogre Pond is great with Follow Me. I think I'm just going to add Indidi. Not Indidi Male. Um, but just a regular uh, entity female uh, with follow me uh, with a bunch of other good stuff. Probably not this one though, because this one has synchronized. <laughs> All right, cool. Psychic Surge. Don't really know what move sets we're gonna be using on entity yet, but the Psy Surge entity makes so we're not gonna have to play around fake out as much with a lot of our ground and Pokemon, like our Iron Bundle and stuff. We also have that big redirection. We also have a little bit of terrain control. I think this team's gonna be a little bit weak to Rillaboom, so entity can be a good mon to come in, disable that grassy terrain to disable the priority of Grassy Glide, and then from there just go redirection as long as we need to. I think entity is gonna be a pivotal part in helping this team versus Shen Pao, pivotal part in helping this team uh, versus other. Uh, Urshifu teams and I just think it's a, a really really good mon and it it makes using the rest of this team's flow charts a lot easier in my opinion I don't know if I necessarily want to make this an imprisoned entity, but we'll we'll see about that when the time comes The last few mons of this team are going to be other aggressively speed tiered mons that pair very very well with the rest of this core I do think we want to add a flutter to this team So remember that's uh going in with option one uh, flutter and bundle go together like two peas in a pod in my opinion um, you know, you go for that big icy win. And we're probably going to be using a Specs Flutter. I'll just be honest here. Probably going to be using a Specs Flutter. So we got Specs Flutter. Um, from there, I want to add um, a little bit of damage mitigation. I'm going to run a little bit bulky Flutter. Maybe a, a bulkier bundle than you might actually be used to. I'm probably going to run a Hisui Arcanine in this spot, I think. All right. And we featured Hisui and Arcanine recently. There's another team building guide for that. That's already up on the channel. I only have the one Hisui and Arcanine, though. That rental code, though, is up on Patreon if you really liked that Hisui and Arcanine rental team that we showed the other day. Right here. And then the last mod on the team, this might be a bit of, like, a sellout, but I am just going to go in Urshifu. And so our team is going to look a little bit like this. So we have the Hisui and Arcanine, the Urshifu. I think the Intimidate's going to pair very, very well with like a little bit of a bulkier Urshifu, a little bit of a bulkier Flutter, bulkier Bundle. Um, Arcanine's going to be able to come out and absolutely destroy people with AoE Rock Slides, big uh, big Flare Blitzes, probably a Fairy Terra Arcanine on this team to help cover up for some specific matchups. Um, but I think Urshifu, Torn, very, very good. You can see, already see the combinations of like, wow, no matter what two Mons I pick, they're almost always going to be an absolutely amazing lead, which if you remember our third idea is multiple S tier lead options. There's not like a bad lead option here. Like almost all of these Pokemon have so much turn one pressure and so much potential for speed control and good offensive aggressive speed tiering. They're in just a really, really good spot. We could also um, maybe substitute out Entity for Far Draft just to stop the priority spam from our opponents. But again, we wanted the redirection, which is why we're actually going to be using Entity here. So that being said, we got our six mons. Next thing I usually like to do is go into a defensive, uh, you know, type calculator 
and just throw these guys in. So we got Tornadus. And let me know if you guys, you know, enjoy these team building guides. You know, I think the last two were very, very well received. Um, but, you know, if you guys want me to keep doing these, I'll keep doing these. They're a lot of fun. I feel like they're pretty educational for people to actually take the time to interact with them and take the things that I'm talking about to heart here. But it does take a lot of time. Normally, I would do a lot of this on, like, pencil and paper. But, you know, I don't mind helping out showing people how these things work. And Urshifu. I think we're gonna have a few uh, weaknesses, but it's fine. Yeah, so a couple shared weaknesses. So we're actually pretty weak to electric, like Urshfu's weak to electric, um, Bundle and uh, Tornadus is weak to electric. We don't have any swaps in on electric, but like things that use electric attacks don't generally stab them in this format, um, other than Regileki, right? So that, that should be fine. Um, and then we have weaknesses of rock. So actually we're pretty weak to Sui Arcanine, but we have like Iron Bundle can pin it, Flutter can rock like Power Gem, who Sui Arcanine is. If it's gonna be going for like rock slides, Urshfu's a good switch in on that that can re then repin it. So I think we do have shots here. Even though we have some big weaknesses, I think we can still have a pretty good time. And so now that we got all that out of the way, I'm going to go into Pokemon Showdown, plug in this team right here, and get ready to go into the team building phase. So Arcanine, Bundle. And this team also, like I was talking about a little bit before, it's going to be very, very, very beginner friendly. So if you're looking to like get into Pokemon and you want a team that hits hard and hits fast and teaches you the advantages of having a hyper aggressive team that has like control of speed from a, you know, going fast perspective, this is a good team for you. Um, it's probably going to lose steam against some other like grindier teams but then like if you're trying to tweak this to understand how you could become better as a player you're going to see like man i wish i had just a little bit more bulk man i had a little bit more of this a little bit more of that you're going to see like what months you might be able to cut in your own games to make this team just a little bit better for your specific play style but that being said all these mods are very very specific um i've said this before i'll say it again I don't normally like to finish off one Mon. You know, I could say this is going to be a Focus Sasher Shifu with Detect, Surging Strikes, this is its EV spread, this is its Terror, this is how it works, but I don't want to bend the rest of the team to like one Pokemon's, you know, will or one Pokemon's role. I want to add one or two moves on every single Mon so I can get a general idea of how I personally like to build these teams. So for example, on the Tornadus, I don't have to finish the Tornadus. I know the reason why I want Tornadus is Tailwind right? That's all I need to know about this. So I'm not locking in my Focus Asher. I'm not locking in a Clover Cloak or locking in a Pacific Terra. We're just doing a little bit on each Mon and filling them in as we go. What do we want each Mon's one job to be? It's another thing you could also do. Um, I've made other team building guides in the past where I give each Pokemon a role and a job title. Like So Tornadus would be titled like Speed Control. So Speed Control, right? Uh, Bundle would be Speed Control 2. So we're making it so not one Mon has to do all the jobs, right? So if it's if it's just Tornadus' job to set speed control for the whole team and they have a really good job, they have a really good team that's really, really good against Tornadus, like maybe another Taunt user or something like that, um, we don't want to have Tornadus have to do like everything. We want to have like off tanks or other Mons that do like the same type of job, but don't lose to the same thing Tornadus loses to and vice versa. So Bundle will be speed control too. Indity would be title redirection. And the whole point of like all these exercises that I'm going for is being like deliberate with your uh, moveset choices, deliberate with your, your mon choices and stuff like that. Redirection right there. Bam. Flutter main would be um, like, I would call it more of like a late game, such like mid game, like this is our closer. This is our checkmate piece. Um, this basically is, this is the mon that we just bring at the very end, just go. So we get our speed control up, bring around a flutter, we go like a fairy terra specs and just go. They're dead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, Arcanine's the same exact mom for that, but it's more of like the glue that holds the team together. It's a good defensive pivot. And then like from there, Arcanine also can just be that like late game come in. Once you have the speed control, just go pop, pop, pop. So like what would Arcanine be titled? Uh, checkmate 2? Or checkmate like physical, you know? Checkmate physical versus like checkmate special. And then like Urshi is just... Urshi's just freaking busted, bro. Uh, Urshi is a... It's a really good lead mon that takes a lot of resources to dedicate and check. So Urshifu's gonna have a lot of influence from the team preview from our opponent. So that being said, what would I really title it, though? What's its job? Uh, I've used this term before. I call it a dive buddy. So, um, you see, I've... Uh, actually, you can't see the auto fill ins here, but I have, like, dive buddy, dive buddy 2, dive buddy 3. Dive buddy here. So, like, basically, once you get up your speed control and you want to go, like, all in... 
you know, you have one mon that does a lot of the heavy lifting, you have a second one that goes in as like the secondary mon, that's Urshifu. So it's like a secondary, just like big damage dealer. So these two are basically like the same thing. So that being said, let's go back to speed control here and talk about like what we want to do. We just want Tailwind in this. We don't know if we want Bleak Wind. We don't know if we want Air Slash. We don't even know if we want to go Physical Special, whatever. Doesn't matter. We know we just want Tailwind. That's it. Bundle. What do we want Bundle for? Icy Wind. That's the move that we need it for. Do we want to, you know, add Snowscape over here and give this guy Blizzard and do all that stuff? We don't know yet. There's no reason to lock ourselves in any specific play style. What's the one thing we want all these mods to do? We want Follow Me here. It's a redirection. It's the whole point. Uh, Fluttermane's going to have Dazzling Gleam. We just talked about it. We want this Fluttermane to come out and deal a ton of damage. This Arcanine's probably not going to have extreme speed because it's on par with an Indity that's using, like, Psyterrain. So we're probably going to want, like, Rock Slide. And we're probably going to want Flare Blitz. And we talked about maybe using Terra Boss. We can leave this blank for now. This Urshwoop's probably not going to use Aqua Jet. It's probably not going to use Aqua Jet. But it probably will use Searching Strikes. And it probably will use Close Combat. So that being said, now we have a much better understanding of what we want some of these mods to do, so we can start adding some other moves that help us accomplish the goals of these moves. So, Tailwind. Let's talk about what moves we could add to make sure that Tailwind is active as long and as effective as possible. Well, the first move that comes to mind, for my mind, is Protect. This is going to do a couple things. First of all, Protect is going to let us protect any people that want to like fake out us and stop us from setting up our tail ones so it makes us not have to be relying on an item like a covert cloak or a ghost terror like terra those are resources that you know we can't really get back once we use them so having protect being able to be, just be like yo i'm just going to protect you can't fake out me you can't do anything weird and then i'm going to set tailwind next turn that's good another value of protect on tailwind setters is you're able to protect on the last turn of an active tailwind so then you can reactivate your tailwind again so i think protect on these mons that have like a specific goal or a specific thing that they need to accomplish um very very solid you should try and add that to your teams if possible let's go move on to iron bundle the same thing applies to iron bundle you want protect i think protect's gonna be very very good on this pokemon because a lot of people what they like to do is protect with the teammate that's weakest to iron bundle hit the iron bundle with something because it's a wet noodle in some situations on the sped up side specifically has a low base hp as well so you want to be able to protect those, and then next turn, do your stuff that you want with the bundle. Not that hard. The Entity. Hey, it's almost like it's a pattern, right, of, of learning how these things work. What's one way to make Follow Me work even longer and even better is using Protect. So when your opponent is... The, the addition of Protect basically makes it, especially in an open team sheet situation, where they can't just always nuke your Indity. They have to respect your abilities and Indities to protect. So they might be targeting your teammates, which means your teammates' Protect can work, which means if your Indity has any other moves like Dazzling or Psychic, you can always weave those in as well. So Protect is going to be pivotal in getting the maximum amount of follow me's because it elongates Indities' uh, time on the board and gives the illusion of follow me as long as possible. So it's going to be very, very good. What else do we need on Flutter? We don't necessarily know yet. Uh, I've talked about probably using a spec set here, so let's just fill out some moves that would be on a spec set. And then leave this last move slot blank for now. This Arcanine, we know we're not going to use Extreme Speed, but we might be using um, Head Smash. I'll put Head Smash here. I'm a fan of this. I'm probably going to use a Banded Arcanine set on this team. And we're probably going to use Terra Blast, but I'll leave it blank for now, because it's not, it's not required that we put that there to build it. Because like if we find something else here, we might really want to mess it up and just put Protect here. We might realize that like Life Orb Arcanine with these three movesets is just as good through some calcs. We can just leave that alone for now. Urshfu. Urshfu gets a Detect over Protect. And I've talked about this before, but you usually always want to use Detect over Protect in any situation that you can because first of all, uh, it's a lot easier to imprison Protect than Detect, but also Detect only has eight PP, which means if that's caught in an Encore loop, you can actually get free from that sooner uh, than you would on Protect. And once, you're, once you run out of PP and you're free from that Encore loop, you're able to do whatever you want. So it's actually a lot better to use Detect in my opinion, personally. Um, that being said with this last move, uh, Urshifu Water gets a lot of cool moves. It gets like Ice Spinner, which we don't really need on this team. Um, it gets Swords Dance. It gets Poison Jab. It gets Rock Slide. I've used Rock Slide before. It gets Taunt. There's a lot of cool moves that it gets. And we can just leave it blank for now. There's nothing There's nothing that we have to do. Note that we haven't done our items. We haven't done our EVs. We haven't even finished up our move slots. And we're going back over here. And what else do we want? I think because I talked about I want this team to be as fast as possible, I'm going to put the Icy one and the Bleak one here. Now, I could cut this for Rain Dance. I could cut this for Taunt. I could cut this for... I could cut this for Sunny Day on some teams. But I'm going to put the Icy one here because I want to be able to do that same thing that Bundle's doing, and have that multiple forms of speed control. If you remember what we were talking about at the very front, 
What are the three things? I want easy to use speed control and use the fastest Pokemon. I want to go first. Right? I want to go first. Ask questions later. So I'm doing this. We got uh, Icy Wind. You got the full moveset there. This bundle set. I think that I'm going to use a bulkier bundle than some people might like. So I'm going to use an Iron Bundle set that is a little bit more experimental. And I'm not going to use Hydro Pump on it because I, I don't really want to. I'm going to use Freeze Dry because I think Freeze Dry is too good to leave off the table. You also kind of need Freeze Dry to check Water um, Ogre Pond to stop it from stopping our Urshifu. So I, I like the Freeze Dry. But then the last move I want to put here is Encore. I'd like to try a bulkier bundle with Icy Wind and Encore. It's been a while since I've used this set. And uh, I think it could actually really work here. Arcanine's a bit of a problem now. But... Yeah, Arcanine's just a bit of a problem. But hey, you know what? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. If Arcanine ends up being too big of a problem, we'll go back. But I don't want to miss a Hydro Pump either. So, like, this is okay. All right, as far as this entity... Uh, we could go in Prison Trick Room. We could. Um, we could. It doesn't matter. They don't have attacks. It doesn't even matter. Um, I don't think I want to win Prison Trick Room. I don't necessarily see a reason for it because our team has good options against Trick Room using things like Hisuian Arcanine and um, and Fluttermane as well. So I don't think we need to do that. I think that Dazzling Gleam is a solid option. And I think that Helping Hand is better than it's given credit for on this situation. I'm trying to think of what else we could do. We could just go Psychic, but I'm going to put the Helping Hand here and we're going to leave it at that. And as far as the Fluttermane and its last move, so I'm going to put Power Gem here. I like this exclusively versus Uin Arcanine and Fire Ogre Pond, two mons that actually are worth checking. You also see randomly, like, see, like, Chi use and stuff like that. Power Gem is super effective and so it's good. As for this Arcanine, we are going to put the Terra Blast. And as for this Urshifu, yeah, this is a this is a bit of a weird one. You don't, I don't think you want the Aqua Jet, right? I really don't think you want the Aqua Jet. I'm trying to think, like, what other moves we would use here. It's, I know it sounds so weird. I like Rock Terra here. Like, it's just my own, like, Rock Terra, Rock Slide here. I, I like it. I'm a fan of it. Um, you know, you it, the Unseen Fist doesn't work with Rock Slide because it doesn't make contact. But I, I still think it's good. I kind of want to put, like, Trailblaze or something here, too. Like, something something fun, you know? Um, I think we get, like, Ice Punch if I want to do that. I think it gets, you know, it gets Taunt. It gets Swords Dance. Maybe we'll just put Swords Dance because we have Redirection. Oh, sounds good to me. I'll put Sword Dance. Yeah, Sword Dance is busted, so yeah, let's go for it. So with that being said, we now have all of our moves picked, and we haven't really even taken that long. So the next thing I like to do is, you know, let's let's just let's lock out these uh, abilities. You know, we know this is going to be Psychic Surge, and then the rest of these abilities are very standard. Unseen Fist, Intimidate, Protosynthesis, Quark Drive, very very standard. Um, the next thing I like to do is start looking at like items. We've, we've briefly talked about what I want some of these guys to do. I'm going to make this guy a Sash for now. Um, I'm going to make this that booster energy, giving us preferably a boost to a speed stat. On the indie, I'm going to sit on a Rocky Helmet for now. And I don't know how I feel about it yet. But we're going to sit here for now. What I mean is going to be Specs. And Arcanine is going to be Banded. And then Urshifu is going to be Mystic Water. Now, this looks like a very, very standard, easy to play team. And that's because it is. Right? You want to get up your Tailwind, maybe have an Icy Wind if you feel like it, have a little bit of Redirection if you feel like it, and then from there go like Specs damage, Banded damage, Urshfu just rinse and repeats everything, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's that's how this team is made to work, right? So that being said, let's go take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Tornadoes first. You know, you could get like really in depth and be like, well, if I make my Eevee spread something like, you know, Let's let's just give you a default tornado's Eevee spread. I want to I want to show you guys with this team that like less is more, right? Less is more sometimes. This set would like always outspeed base 100s, and then from there you can do like this to always be able to KO Urshifus, and then you can throw like a mixture of like yeah you know, 124 and go like 44 and get like a bulky tornado spread, and like this is bulky and it works. But this is one of the situations where we're sashed, right? We don't need this bulk, and we don't need less speed, and we don't need less special attack because we're gonna die in two hits. So in this situation, there's no reason to like try and min max our damage mitigated or lower our own speed stats, goodness forbid, or lower our own special attacks. Uh, in this sort of situation, because you're using a Sashmon, you can just click the button. You know, this is, this is still better over here, but 
you want to be as fast as possible on your Sashmon and as strong as possible on your Sashmon. And it's really good that Tornadus has a 111 base speed. This is going to be outspeeding things that are in the 110 area, which is still pretty popular, um, and, the, and the 109 area, which has things like a low nine tails, which you would like to outspeed. Um, so I think that just clicking the button on your Sashmons is usually an okay. It's going to give you full speed, your full offensive stat, and that's completely fine. Now, going to this Iron Bundle, a lot of people have historically clicked the button. You want to be as fast as possible, strong as possible. I don't think we want to do that. I do think that we want to be as fast as possible because I want to be able to always outspeed uh, or at least speed tight other bundles. But as weird as it sounds, I also want to be able to outspeed people when I don't have my booster. I want to be able to always outspeed a Shen Pao when I don't have my booster. So let's say I have to swap or come back in or goodness forbid I get a minus one. Still want to outspeed their Shen Pao. So, and I still want to outspeed like booster Roaring Moons, booster Flutters, things like that. I want to go first. Remember, that's kind of you know, the whole point of the team, you know, use the fastest Pokemon and stuff like that. So that being said, we're gonna have to take a lot of points out of special attack, but that's gonna be fine. Cause look at, we're mostly just here for like speed control and encores. So it's actually by putting our points in speed, we're making our encore even better in my opinion. It's almost like a pseudo encore that you can use against dark types, which would normally be immune to like prankster encores. So that being said, how much special attack do I need? This is where we're gonna take our first dips into the damage calculator for this session. So we're gonna plug in iron bundle. And we're just going to go over a couple Pokemon that we would like to, you know, one shot or two shot with freeze dry, which is going to be able to hit water types for super effective damage and things like Gastrodon and Water Ogre Pond. You're going to hit those for four times super effective damage. So those we're going to be taking a look at. But first, we're going to take a look at Urshifu. Urshifu Water specifically. I don't think that we can Oko Urshi Water, even though Urshi Water has like a not so great uh, sped up stat. I don't think we Oko it. Here we go. So. Uh, maybe, maybe. We'll see. I don't think we Oko it. Yeah, you still don't Oko it. You don't always Oko it, right? And so, because it's not an Oko, and usually Urshi Waters are rocking like 20 or 30 points extra in bulk somewhere, eh, I don't think it's worth it to go that invested. Uh, let's take a look then at... Let's take a look at Gastrodon. Maybe we can catch a Gastrodon on a freeze dryer or force something else to tear and punish it. So take a look at a Gastrodon here. And a Gastrodon. This says it does Oko if we have full investment, but they haven't done anything yet. So Gastrons are usually going to pop about there, there. So that would be, that would be a standard Gastron set. They only have actually a little bit of special attack and a lot of defense. So that's where a Gastron would be. Worst case scenario, you might see a calm on top of this, but like, let's see how many points we can take out and still get that Oko. Do we need 20 points? Like, that's value. Let's still look at Grass Ogre Pond. So far, the benchmark is um, 20 points that we need. Wellspring is what this guy's called. So this is four times super effect with freeze dry. And you see, we just Oko hard into like a sweeper set. But let's give him full HP because that might be on a water pond set. And we still Oko. And then if they wanted to like click this button and get the water boost, this would come. I wonder if this comes with like the spadef already built in. Hmm. I'm assuming that it does. Yes, it does. Cool, cool. Um, so then we, there's a three shot. It's a three shot there and that's okay. That's okay. So it looks like 20 points is all we need to actually get our, our goals done. Cause this is still a super one shot. I, even if they were like really bulky, I'm talking like real 72. Let's see how much we would need to get that next little kicker. All right. So they go, let's say they go 76 points. What do we need to get over that? I'm gonna put the 28. I think that's fine. Like maybe, let's see what happens when they have 100. Let's get over that. Because the last Pokemon I'd want to make sure, we're just gonna take a look at it, is Landorus. It'd be nice to always Oko Landorus, right? Maybe that's what we should have looked at it the first time. But let me know if you guys like these little calcs sections and, and are actually learning anything from this, or if you think this is tedious and you just want to see more like move select choices, because I want to know as well. So Freeze Dry says Landorus is super dead. Um, if they were to click just a flying type and go all in, well, they're not dead, but like in reality, like Icy Wind here should still be a two shot on the Landorus. Eh, it's a three shot on, eh, no, that plus the freeze drive, we get it every time. So we're fine. Um, but even if they don't, like we might even just kill them Oko with Icy Wind, which is sick. So yeah, 52 points. And then we can throw the rest of these points in just straight bulk. Now, I'm a big fan of putting points in your HP first, especially when your HP stat is lower than your respective defensive stats. So you want to go 252 if you can, which, you know, you can't. Um, you, can go, you can go probably something like a 188. 
or sorry, yeah, was it 180? No, it's gonna be 196 or 190, 196, and then we have eight points extra, and we cut those up into two points here. So instead of going 204 and just straight into HP, we're gonna cut that last little eight up into two sets of four, because one point in each of these respective defenses is worth, two is more than one, so we're gonna take those two points all the way to the bank. Pretty good stuff. We might be able to optimize this to take points specifically out of HP and put them specifically just into Spadef, but this is gonna be a fat bundle, like big, big fat bundle. So that's gonna be a really, really cool mod. As for this entity, um, I'm gonna put a little bit in speed. I'm gonna put 12 points and the 12 points is gonna let us get to 107, which if we double that, so let's just outspeed Dragapult, which is like more commonly referred to as like the fastest Pokemon in the format. Like, yes, Regilecki's popular right now, you can't catch that. Yes, there's booster bundles and booster flutters. You can't catch those either. But without any damage modifiers or without any item or without, without anything else, um, Dragapult with a 142 base speed, it gets to 213. This outspeeds that by one. And so this is all of the speed you need on NDD. From there, um, I want to make, I want to see how much damage I need to KO a Shen Pao. I just want to see it. So let's go NDD F and do Shen Pao. Let's plug in Dazzling Gleam. I just want to see some stuff. Imagine if they give Shen Pao knockoff, dude. That would have been absolutely nuts. So Shen Pao, Dazzling Gleam does not do a ton with like no investment at all it doesn't do that much at all um but i'd like it to be a two shot right that's what we're kind of taking a look at and holy moly it's looking like it's gonna just be a lot of points to do that i don't think i want to do that i don't think i want to do that so that being said like is dazzling gonna be even the move that we want to have here i think it still probably is um but still uh it's it's saddening knowing that it's not. So that being said, it just obviously isn't worth it to put like any points in special attack in my opinion. Um, so that being said, uh, I probably would just go max out the HP and then I would probably do like a 4-4-236 four, four, and just get the maximum amount of value from our Rocky Helmet, making the most amount of defense uh, as we possibly can and go with an attack producing nature. So that being said, you know, we answered our own question for us of like, should we go special attack investment? It's obviously not really that value. I was thinking like maybe we could get a two shot where if they hit us in Rocky Helmet proct, we'd be able to two shot with Dazzling Gleam and it just isn't really looking like it's valuable here. Even if we had something like, you know, a Fairy Terra and we clicked it, like it's still, it's a two shot at best. So, hey, you know, we take those all the way to the bank, but there's no point in like trying to, you know, 252 club, like, modest our way out of this one. We still can't even Oko with Dazzling, so it's fine. All right, so we're on to Flutter. Flutter's a bit of a weird mon. Um, I like my Flutters to outspeed Genies. So I want to get my Flutter to actually 181, which is going to outspeed Lycanroc by one. You may not think it's important to outspeed Lycanroc, but, like, when you can lead, like, Tornadus and Flutter versus, like, Titar Lycanroc, and you can Tailwind to still outspeed that Lycanroc and just double double tap them with D Gleam. It's actually really, really nice. So, um, you know, you're already out putting in the work to outspeed Genies at 179, right? Um, so you're already, you're already going to 180, and then you might as well just go to 181. That's just how I like to look at it. From there, I'm going to go full special attack investment, and then I'm just going to split these up and put the bulk of them in HP because Flutter's HP is so low. And then from there, you just go like this. Very, very easy to use Flutter set. It's a little bit bulkier, and if you can surround it with Intimidators like we have of Asu and Arcanine, it's going to be bulkier than you might think. Um, but it's fast enough, it's strong enough, and uh, yeah, it's just a good solid set. As for this Arcanine, Arcanine is going to want to go to a 121. 121 is going to be the, the threshold that you need to hit on these sort of mons when you want to make use of a plus one calc or a minus one calc from things like Icy Boom. We went over this in the last team building guide video. Um, basically, if we take a look at Hisui and Arcanine right here. So Hisui and Arcanine, let's just plug in this choice bound calc and change some of these sets. Right, so we want to get just to, let's see, make sure it's right. Yeah, we need 84 points, it says. Why does this one, oh, it says it's jolly. All right, we want to get 84 points in here. So this lets us get to 121, which then if we plus one calc, you see it'd be that same 181 as our flutter, which is nice. You might even want to go like 92 to just like always outspeed our flutter in those situations. If like maybe flutter had like a minus one or something else attached to it, I think this is actually still a fine play. So we're gonna be just a little bit faster, but at the same time, like anyone that's like minus one dropped, like so if they had like a tornadus over here, 
right, let's say they had a tornado and it was like level 50 and it was 252 timid and it got minus one from like one of our icy winds from something. Maybe 119, that's slower than our 122. So that's it's how those things work. Um, I'm gonna put the 92. I think the 92 just a little bit of speed creeps fine. Uh, and then from there, I'm just gonna go 252 and Arcanine has moves that deal recoil from like head smash and fire blitz. So we don't necessarily need to put like a ton of points into HP. That being said, um, these are all just like extra points. The standard play here would be something like, you know, four, four, uh, 156. That'd be probably the standard way to do it. Um, I'm actually gonna take a look though and see how much damage Hisui and Arcanine takes from um, a flutter main, like a Specs flutter main. I wanna see if I can actually use it as a spadef pivot. And even if I get KO'd by my own Flare Blitz or something, if I can swap in, mitigate damage from Moonblast, protect with my teammate, and then Flare Blitz to kill them back, that's actually really, really valuable in my opinion. So let's plug in Flutter Main Specs. And we're gonna change a couple of these sets. So we're gonna make it modest, give it a Fairy Terra double dip, and this Moonblast, we want that Moonblast to our Arcanine to do uh, less than half, right? So how much points do we need in Arcanine to be able to mitigate that? If, it, if it's even possible. It looks like it's not even possible, right? So maybe the Dazzling Gleam, we can mitigate the Dazzling Gleam. Bam, so Dazzling Gleam, we actually can mitigate that one out to do less than half in doubles. It already does less than half. God, that Moonblast is just so strong. Um, Shadow Ball, it looks like it's not a KO, just straight up against us anyways. So it doesn't really matter like where we put these points specifically, in my opinion. As long as you're putting them in some bulk respectively, you can put them in defense, you can put them in HP, you can put them... They're all, like, very, very solid points to, places to put them. Um, let's see, though. Let's be a little bit more specific. Let's set these to 50 for sure. And then, like, what would be the best way to do it? I would do something like probably a 60-20 rest in HP. I usually... Uh, I think if you're looking for a good threshold to make yourself just, like, a little bit chunkier, you can usually put 60... 20 or make that a little bit extra and then just throw 84 here. I think this is fine. Um, yeah, I think this is okay. And we're gonna test this for now. If this is if this needs tweaking, if I need more spit up, I take some points out of defense or HP, put them in spit up. If I need more HP, I put some more points in HP. But you this is a pretty good stat line. And again, this Arcanine's basically just gonna come out and yeet things with like choice band moves. That's its whole point. As far as this Urshifu, I've seen Urshifus do a lot of different things recently. I've seen Urshifus do a lot of different stuff. You can click the button on Urshifu. There's nothing really wrong with it. Being able to always outspeed Landos if you have speed control. So like if they lead Scarf Lando and intimidate you and you lead like Bundle, who's going to have that plus one booster in speed and so be able to outspeed Landos, you can go like E-Speed plus the Surging Strikes and just get that Lando off the board. Lando shouldn't even be coming to the matchup in that situation. So that being said, like what else do we need this speed for? I think I'm actually going to use this Urshi spread for this team specifically because first of all, it's easy to play. That's what we want. But then also... Since we're going to be going so hard into like the hyper aggression and these are all very popular Pokemon, I don't want to lose speed ties on a mon that's very, very important. I don't know if you guys saw uh, my review of the Latin American International Championships, but there was one matchup where one Urshifu was faster than the other Urshifu the whole set. One Urshifu was just a little bit bulkier. It was probably an Adam Urshifu set. The Jolly Urshifu, or the faster Urshifu, was just able to bully that slot the whole time. And I don't even want to, like, do that. I I'm fine, like, missing KOs that I might have gotten if I was adamant, knowing full well that, like, hey, like, I'm going to be able to close combat your Urshu whenever I feel like it, and I don't have to fear at all. So I'm going to go with this for now, especially because we have the Swords Dance. Um, I don't think we need the addition of adamant. I um, mean, I'm fine putting the last four points in speed up as opposed to HP. So that being said, the last thing that I like to do is take a look at my Terras. Um, as for the Urshi, I think I want to double dip water. Again, common defensive Terras here that I like are things like uh, grass and rock, but water Terra is going to be good here for double dipping that damage. Um, Arcanine, we're going to go Fairy here. I actually really want to try the Fairy Arcanine. I've seen a lot of people using it. I think it's great for Coma O's, which this, which this team might struggle with a little bit. Uh, Fluttermane's going to double dip Fairy Terra as well. Um, Indidi, though... I'm going to go with grass. We're going to try grass. I think grass might be uh, something worth messing around with. You could also go dragon. Let's actually go dragon for this one. Let's go dragon. Be able to mitigate damage from Ogre Pond. Be able to mitigate damage from Urshifus. I think this dragon's going to be a fun one. Bundle has to go ghost, uh, just so you can avoid fake outs. And Torn will also be ghost, just to avoid fake outs and other priority spams, especially a Tornadus who's not protected by any of these side terrain. Kind of got to go that ghost. So that being said, um, the last little thing that I want to talk about is something that maybe I should make a whole video on. Let me know if you want to see a whole video on this in the future. The organization of your team preview. 
I want them to think I'm doing a very specific thing and I want them to dedicate resources to have to check those things specifically. So I want them to think I'm full torn Urshi Andy when in reality I'm going to try and go torn bundle and then like Urshi arc or Urshi flutter in the back. That's kind of like the idea I'm setting up here. So that being said, um, we're going to go into this and we're going to go play some games and hopefully we get some wins. And then after that, we're going to work on some flow charts where we actually like break down everything that we need to do uh, to see like what our lead options are and how we can effectively still accomplish these goals that we're working with here. So let's go into some games. Um, I'll just play on my main. It's fine. Actually, I don't want to play on my main because like that's then they know. I, I always think that, like, I don't know, maybe I should play my main. Let me know if you want to see more games on my main. But, like, people generally just, like, they play a specific way against me. And maybe I should be practicing on my main so, like, people that uh, I'm going to be playing against tournaments with, you know, treat me correctly. But it is what it is. Let's look at this guy's um, team. We're going to be Dozo in this first game. Don Doza with Yawn. So, Yawn without, uh, left without Protect is going to be harder for them to use. Choice Scarf here is good. White Herb Chi Yu, you don't see that often. So I can actually waste that White Herb with an Intimidate. So actually, I can force that. Chi I can actually swap in my Arcanine and just get the Chi Yu. Um, I can basically make, make it waste its item if I feel like it. Booster Flutter, we talked about how it, uh, we're trying our best to beat that. Banded Arcanine and Sash Ambo. So these last two mods, I think Indy's going to be very, very good against it. Yes, they have the... Oh, they don't have Ice Spinner. Indy's nuts here. Okay, so then what do we need to do to break Urshifu? Or break Urshifu. I wish they would have had Protector so that I could have actually, like, Encored it. That being said, I think I'm going to lead Arcanine to get an Intimidate up into those guys. This uh, Dragonite is pro... Oh, it's multi-scale. Oh, we can just Intimidate cycle this for days with Arcanine then. So we have Arcanine. And Bundle is good. I don't even need Torn here. But then they have to respect it, right? That's the value. Uh, from there, I'm going to go Indidi. And I'm going to bring um, Fluttermane for this first one. <laughs> we have them all nicknamed, too. <laughs> Checkmate physical, speed control too, let's go. Okay, so I really don't think there's a problem with like, hmm, I, I could just go rock slide. I know they're going to swap in Tatsu. I'm actually just going to go pivot in entity and what's its terror? Is it steel? It's water terror double dip. That's not bad. I'll just go for a freeze dry. I don't think it's a problem at all. If we if we freeze too, we'll wins up. Uh, the thing I'm going to do the turn for that is probably go protect with my... I might, I might have had to actually just go Icy win this turn. It's hard to say. Oh, wow. They just left that Dragonite in. That's nuts. So now that Dozo is super weak. You can rock slide me. It's okay. Yawn into Dozo. Cool. We're just going to swap back an Arcanine. Um, I think that's going to be fine. Swap back an Arcanine. Break the uh, Dragonite's multi-scale if they want to do it. Second Intimidate. Ooh, Shenpao. Oh, on that D-Gleam, though. Not bad. Ooh, you miss on one. Ooh, that's big damage on Arcanine, though. Big, big, big damage. Cool. All right. So in this situation, um, we want, you still want to preserve the Arcanine the best that you can. Um, I think that there's nothing really wrong, though. They have Sucker Punch, Sacred Sword. So they can Icicle Crash here. I don't think they even get the KO. Um, so Dazzling is going to get the KO there. I'm going to swap in my Flutter here. That's the right play for me. Yeah, what are you doing? Like, Sacred Sword? Like, go nuts. Like, it's a Flutter Man. Like, easy peasy. You had, you had no options there. And if they actually would have hit the end of it, they would have gotten KO'd by, uh, they would have gotten KO'd by the Rocky Helmet. So in this situation, I can just go follow me because I'm not afraid of the Dozo at all. I can actually double dip my Fairy Terra. And just like we talked about setting up these checkmate pins, you can absolutely, totally, positively protect. You're just going to lose your Dozo this turn. And then you can bring that Dragonite back out, but like, this entity is just locking you up. There's the Tatsu. Same thing. Easy peasy. Lemon squeeze. This is Choice Scarf Tatsu. Their best play is. I, I guess Choice Scarf Icy Wind. It's actually Choice Scarf Muddy Water to be able to get a, a speed drop on, or actually drop on my Flutter. And they get the extra drop there, but not on that one. Oh, not on the right one. Cool. So we're going to get both these guys taken out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy right there. And then from there, they send out Dragonite. We just, I think that they didn't tear it yet, right? So Dragonite's Terra was normal. I'm just going to get an Intimidate Cycle. And if they want to lock in like E Speed there, this should be able to protect us a little bit. And I can just go. I'm going to go for a head smash, because I can. You can go tear if you want. We have all the right stuff to beat this one. So Banded Dragon, I can only really walk into one move. If it wants to E-speed out the Flutter, it's going to have a really hard time hitting the Arcanine. If it wants to go Rock Slide here, 
Oh my gosh, we actually just O-code it still. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we're going to go into game two. So this team worked exactly, exactly like we wanted it to. This this game, we might see a little bit of the Chi Yu because Chi Yu is something that would put a lot of pressure on this. Note that we still haven't really used our Urshfu, which I think is a very, very important Pokemon, especially for breaking this Chi Yu. So that being said, uh, if we take a look at their team just a little bit, uh, Chi Yu is Ghost Terra. So I'm actually going to lead Urshi here. And I'm going to lead Urshi Bundle. And then I probably should go Indity. I really should. It was so good in that last game. But I don't even think they're bringing Arcan. I don't even think they're bringing Dragonite because Dragonite was just kind of locked out of the game. So I think I'm going to go uh, Arcanine and my Flutter. And I don't think we're going to see Dragonite as often. Just the straight Dozo Totsi. That's how you know you got the Dozo player pin, right? When they just open up Dozo Totsi, bro. That's actually just good, right? Let's think about what we need to do here. Remember, they have Unaware, right? So there's a couple things they can do. They can go for Earthquake, which I don't really want to see. They can go for... Hmm, I'm going to just Detect, and I'm going to Freeze Dry your Dozo. I don't think I need to Icy Wind yet. It's good damage still. And we get the Freeze. Hey, you know what? That, hey, they thought? Good, good job for them. Um, good job. I'm proud of you, bro. So they, they, lock, they go in Order Up, which means I'm just going to swap in my Flutter and lock you in on that move and win the game. Yes, you can go after my Bundle. I can even Protect. Like, we're fine. They actually hit the right slot, and they crit. Never lucky, bro. Never, ever, ever lucky. So in this situation, I don't know if I should Terra here, because I don't know if we're going to need it. I probably don't need to be doing this, but I will. Fairy Terra, double dip. Big damage. Nice. And then from here, we just double into the Dozo. Our first freeze dry did 32%. If we were to get the high roll there, that'd be great, but I don't think we will. Um, I'm just going to Moonblast there, and... I mean, I'll try and get the high roll. Never lucky, bro. You can't remember, you can't try the Tatsu. So it would have been nice to get the Tatsu there. It's not the end of the world, though. So these two are still very, very nice. We still outspeed the Tatsu here. They still don't know if we have Indity, so we can actually still swap that in if they want to come out with some. There's that Chi we were talking about. Ah, that's that's not the play. You're dead. So, and obviously if that Dondozo had like Encore, we would have wanted to actually just Encore him. They're not going to get the speed drop on the Chi Yu because of the wider, but like they still just get Gimped and then they're probably Ice Winning me here, right? Or Muddy Watering. It's absolutely fine. Uh, and then from there, what could you have? You could have like Shen Pao. Um, there's a few different things you can have. I, I, I guess you can go Arcanine here. I don't think there's an issue with Arcanine here. Because you also don't want to show Urshi if they don't have the right mons. Cool. This is a this is a great mon with like that Flutter. So Protosynthesis boosts into speed. So it's speed boost Flutter. Uh, and it doesn't even have Protect. So the best they're going to have is like a Shadow Ball there. Or like, I'm sorry, a Moonblast there. And that that's okay. I think that's all right. Um, let's realistically think about this. So we might lose both of our mons this turn if I don't play this correctly. Tatsu is faster than our Arcana right there. But it's not faster than our... Hmm... I'm trying to think if there is like a reason to like repivot this Arcanine out. I'm trying to think if there's also a reason to like save the Flutter for something. Let's see. I'm just gonna go Moonblast into this Flutter. And I actually think I'm just gonna Flare Blitz the Flutter, because that Tatsu can't break me. Alright, cool, we're not dead then, it's fine. Yeah, I was just I was just like looking around, I was like, ah, is there like a crit situation where we because if we lost the Flutter main to like a crit there, that might have been a little bit dicey. But then right here on this Tatsu, it can't really break our Urshbu, so we're absolutely fine. So I like what we went with here. Um, note that because they got that like speed boost, sorry, that special attack boost, right? Sorry, actually, they had a speed boost, right? Let me actually check this. Yeah, they, they, they had the speed boost. So if they crit us with a Shadow Ball, we would have been in for a bad time, but it's fine. So we're going to take these wins. CC, baby, all the way up. So easy peasy, lemon squeeze. It would have been even easier if they had stuff that we could have encored. But we are going to be taking this one. And there's not that much that Scarf Tatsu is going to be able to do here. Scarf minus one speed Tatsu. I don't really think they have that many uh, plays here. We're just going to turn the timer on. And yeah, I think this team definitely like worked exactly how we wanted it to. We had our speed control. We didn't even need to use Torn. That's the cool thing. Remember that speed control too? We didn't even need Torn. I feel like if we would have brought Torn, Torn would have had much less of an impact in this game than Bundle did. So like Bundle was definitely good enough, definitely filled that little niche and put, uh, you know, put our opponent to the test, forced them to get those minus one speed drops, hit those big freeze dries. And then from there, we were able to just go full aggression. We went with Entity in game one. We went with Urshifu in game two. And uh, they dropped the leave. So we'll, we'll just take this one. And uh, yeah, let's go into... Let's go into doing some flowcharts. 
flowcharts. Here we go. So you got S tier leads. And this is your daily reminder to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're liking this that far. I, I got a text message I have to check. All right. All right. What sort of messages am I getting right now? I will do this a little bit later. But yeah, leave, leave a like on the video. I would appreciate it. Um, you know, I work pretty hard on these, getting all these stuff made beforehand and practicing it. And, you know, I can't even type. I'm so thankful. Not just because it's been Thanksgiving this week. All right, B tier leads. I actually don't think we're going to see any like B tier leads on this team because this team's only good leads. So the way that I like to do this is I like to look at the every single Pokemon and, you know, corral them based off what they're you know, lead combos are. So for example, with this team, we're going to go over here and we're going to have like everything positive about like Torn Urshi, everything positive about Torn Arcanine, everything positive about Torn Indity, everything positive about Torn Bundle, everything positive about Torn Flutter. And then from there, you're down to Urshi, Urshi Arc, Urshi Indity, Urshi Bundle, Urshi Flutter. So this is how I like to do it. There's about 15 lead combinations and we're going to rank every single one so you have a better idea of what you could be leading and the situations in which they're strong. So S tier lead. The first one that we have is Torn Bundle. Torn Bundle is an S tier lead. All right, so the good thing about Torn Bundle is it's our fastest lead in the game. And you basically have like Tailwind plus Icy Wind for double speed control. And what you can actually do is like a suicide that suicide lead is where you go like torn bundle and you click like tailwind icy wind you're gonna lose them on they're gonna kill they're gonna kill one of your mons especially if they're like trying to trade tailwinds with you um you might even lose both your mons but then from there you have so much more speed control you can send out like a banded arcanine a specs flutter a big urshfu and just roll both their mons back but then now you're the one with a tailwind and you have your two mons and then they have their two mons but like you have a tailwind so you might just win so it's really really good for getting those like two three turn uh victories. I like it a lot. It's a really, really good, easy to play weed that even most beginners can use. It's good against everything except for like Trick Room um, or like Dozo or other like combo based teams. That being said, toward Indidi, I'm going to put it in A. And the reason why it's not an S tier weed is obviously there's, it's very passive, but the good thing about it is there are going to be situations where I'm going to call this one double speed control. So what I like to do with this one is like Tailwind, follow me. Indity takes some Rocky Helmet damage. Indity might even get KO'd. You give your Tailwind. Next turn, you send out something else. And then you have the Icy Wind plus your Tailwind. So it actually lets Torn function as like a mixture of Tornadus and Bundle at the same time. So it's actually putting a putting to use the fact that we have multiple forms of speed control on Torn. And it elongates Torn. It lets Torn live a, a much longer lifespan. And it's really, really good if you're fighting against like Ogre Ponds and stuff like that. So you can redirect to make them take Rocky Helmet damage. You can sit on your Torn longer to be able to go for those maximized Bleak Wind Storms. It's really, really good. I think it's a very, very passive lead, but you can definitely do this in like a Game 2 or a Game 3 situation and get some big value out of it. So up next. And it's also really good if like you need Terrain Control for some reason. Um... Uh, it doesn't protect your Torn, but like Terrain Control for the rest of the matchup. The next lead is going to be Torn Flutter. That's an S tier lead. And Torn Flutter is a uh, fast damage. Like, easy peasy. You set the Tailwind and you kill them, right? What is this weak against? Fake outs. You probably want to bring Inity in the back so you can just swap out the Torn and still kill them with their Flutter because what are they doing if they're clicking Fake Out? They're not setting Speed Control, which means you don't even need your Tailwind, which means you swap in your Inity. Uh, make so you can't get fake out it and you just fairy tear and just bop them over. Um, it's just really, really good. You have access to Icy Wind. You have access to Tailwind. You have access to just a lot of stuff. You have you can also like Bleak Wind and uh, Dazzling Gleam. You can also just terrorize your Torn and not tear your Flutter and have two ghost types. It means you're actually immune to fake out. So there's, there's a lot of really good weeds. This is a solid weed. This forces your opponent to meet you at a specific level. Like if your opponent's just like someone that likes playing Pokemon, maybe you're just playing on ladder and they're using like an EV team or they're using like a Grum Pig or they're using like Mouse Ape or something. You can just glee with this and be like, bro, you don't get to play. I'm invalidating your existence. So it's a very, very easy team to play. Very, very easy lead. I don't recommend using your Flutter so early all that often, but hey, if they don't got the right team to deal with it, they just lose. That's fine. We take those all the way to the bank. So good stuff. Up next, Torn Arcanine. All right. It's uh, also an S tier weed. It's uh, kind of fast damage. <laughs> so what I mean by that is Arcanine has like not as much speed investment as Flutter, right? So Arcanine's not as fast when you get that Tailwind up, but it's still big damage because it's choice banded and you get the Intimidate. So it's actually going to make Arcanine kind of fat, 
like Torn has a sash that's already, you know, two shotable. It's you're probably not gonna get double KO'd on both your mons, so you're gonna go Tailwind, Rock Slide, Flare Blitz, whatever have you. You're probably gonna get a KO and have two mons that are low. And then from there, you do like a fadeaway Icy Wind or a fadeaway move with your Arcanine. From there, your opponent's gonna have like two or three mons that are potentially softened up or hit by speed control. You bring out your flutter, you bring out your Urshi, easy peasy lemon squeezy, game ends in two turns from there. So as far as like flow charting, kind of understanding what your opponents can do to deal with our leads, that's the most important thing. And, you know, I got a lot of comments on the past couple guides I've done saying like, that's, I really like your flow charts, but I want to know like how to counter my opponent. I don't want to know a better job of how to like dictate play. I want to do a better job of like countering them. And the best way to counter them, like it realistically, if you're trying to counter your opponents, you're giving your opponents like a lot of... You're giving your opponents a lot of resources that they don't need to be having, right? The reason why we flowchart these is to make sure that we can play the same game in a wide variety of situations to get the goals that we want. We don't need to bring in the intangibles of opponents having any sort of anything impact on the game. Like, it really turns down to do you want to win or do you want to like, you know, just sit around on the board for a few turns and hope that you can, you know, galaxy brain, you know, Pegasus Millennium Eye, your opponent's master plan. If that's the game that you want to play, you, you, maybe you play Nuzlocke. Uh, I don't know. I'm not trying to say that one's more competitive than the other. I'm just trying to say, like, you don't need to counter them. You can just kill them. And that's, like, the big thing that separates, like, competitive Pokemon from casual Pokemon. Yeah, you end up using a lot of the same useless mons, like, you know, Indides, Bundles, Urshfu's, Arcanines, the good stuffs, right? But... At the end of the day, they're good for a reason. And I know that a lot of people hate to hear that, but I'm just trying I'm just trying to be honest here. Uh, you know, I'm still going to be the meme master extraordinary, use all the fun stuff at events too, but I'm just trying to help you guys out here and be your voice of reason. So that being said, uh, don't try and counter them. Just try and kill them. And the, more, the amount of resources you can deny from them through the use of correct flow charting like this is going to be very, very important. And also, if you don't know how to do this, you probably should practice it because... It's one thing to know how to do this and decide to actively build a more passive reactive team. You know, I even took that Skeletorge team to a midseason. You can play that way and try and play reactive and counter them. And sometimes that is the right play for a meta, but you still need to know how to do stuff like this so you can use it when you need it. So that being said, we just did uh, Torn Arcanine. We're on to Torn Urshifu, S tier lead. Torn Urshifu. Um, un, un, it's so good. <laughs> Torn Urshifu, we've used it in like three teams, right? Um, it's so good. Uh, you're able to set the Tailwind. You're able to get the Icy Wind, have Bleak Winds to check your Ogre Ponds that would normally pin the Urshifu. And then from there, like Urshifu, the good thing about Urshifu is that it hits multiple times. So if your opponent's using a Sashmon or something to have like a really, really solid lead, you're able to just go right through that Eat Speed Lemon Squeezy. This forces your opponent to meet you at your tempo a lot of the time. And even if they get a KO, you're able just to bring out your bundle and repin. You're able just to bring out your Flutter and repin. Heck, a lot of the things that would actually give things like Urshifu problems, you know, like fairy attacks, you can pivot in Arcanine. Grass attacks, you can still kind of pivot in your Arcanine. It takes neutral damage. You can pivot in Arcanine for Intimidates. You can pivot in Flutters to, you know, block any sort of other attacks like that. I think it's just a solid lead. Uh, it really dedicates a lot of resources away from your opponent. They're like, man, I have to do this. Otherwise, Torn Urshi just rolls me. And so if you know what those things that they have to do are, if you're as comfortable as you can be with your teams, you can see what those are. And you can be like, oh, well, they have to do this. Otherwise, it's game over. They have to bring Water Pond to this matchup. They have to bring Gastrodon here, which means you don't even have to go Torn Urshi, which is one of the reasons why Tanesh gives us a lot of, uh, it bluffs very well. And you can just punish those things instead of actually just falling for your opponent's counter. Um, anyways, that's Torn Urshi. Uh, bundle. We got Bundle and... Indidi is up next. I'm going to put that in S, and I like it for a few reasons. And I like it because, first of all, it slows the game down just a little bit, not through the use of just Icy Wind. It slows the game down in being like, so if you, in, in game one, let's say you go Tailwind Bundle, and you go Tailwind, Icy Wind, lose a Mon, bring out Banner, Specs Mon, roll the game, you have a two, three turn game fastest thing ever your opponent's like okay i see you i see you trying to close these games out fast well i'm gonna hit you with even more aggression and you slow the game down and be like all right terrains redirection rocky helmet chip damage icy wind and then on like turn four once you got them used to like slowing it down you make them overextend then you bring out your choice mons then you bring out your urshifu and then you're just like nah fam i'll just trick you like bam 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 you bring out that mid game torn bring out that mid game speed control 
It's really, really good. I like doing this in game two or game three. Um, you can usually kind of tell if these sort of leads are going to work on a player based off how they react to how they lost game one. Or maybe if it's a player you fought a few times at your locals, you can kind of tell if there's someone that really reacts well to conditioning or not. If they are someone that reacts to conditioning and starts over-respecting and starts making the right plays to respect your levels of speed control, um, this sort of leads really, really good for slowing things down. You basically just go follow me Icy Wind into follow me until Entity's gone with Icy Winds slash Encores slash Freeze Dries. And then from there, you just bring out your actual like closer mon being like a flutter, like your, your checkmate piece and just close out the game. So it's passive, but in control. I like this lead a lot. I, and also you're protected from fake outs on your bundle because you have Entity. Very, very cool, very, very cool weed. Uh, bundle Flutter, now the rest of your weed. Imagine that. It's almost like when we built this team, we like picked three things we wanted to work on. And one of them was like having like a lot of s weed options with like a lot of different flowcharts that go out from there. It, it's it's almost like that's exactly what we did. Um, so Bundle Flutter. Very similar to the Torn Flutter, but you can sometimes go with the Bundle Flutter instead of the Torn um, Flutter because like you don't need plus two calcs. If you only need plus one, if they don't have Torn, if they don't have dynamic speed control with like plus two uh, increments there being like tailwind or other prankster tailwind setters just go with your bundle and just like take look look their lando in the face and tell them that you're gonna icy wind it and then their scarf lando will then be slower than your flutter and you can just go dazzling them icy wind and get a double ko in the first turn and like no one wants to fight against the person that just knows they can go flutter and bundle in the same time so it's good and i want to tell i want to say something for a lot of these leads you know, I, I think I should give like a disclaimer. You're not just going to win every game that you play. There are like, obviously this Flutter bundle set is not good against. Let's just, let's think of something. Rilla might be something I don't really like fighting against. I'd have to like swap in Indy or something. I don't really like fighting against Chi Yu with this lead either because we don't have Hydro Pump on our bundle. Um, you know, Indy Sneasel would be something that'd be kind of weird to fight against because Unburden, we give it a plus two over our bundle in some situations. Like, so you see there, there are situations where we're like, oh shit. You know, that you can't just go into this in every single situation, but I'm trying to show you guys the situations in which they're at their best. And when, if you guys can see the situations where they're at their best, you can kind of match those when it's like, oh man, that's a plus one said that like, this is really good specifically against this or when they have this lead, or maybe this is the lead that's giving me a lot of problems. I'm going to dip into that one thing that's a plus one said in this video. And I'm going to add those into my team and add those elements so then I can have those good matchups as well. That's the whole point, is trying to find the good things that can happen with these leads. It's not a beat-all, end-all, do this and you win every game. But it kind of is, right? I mean, it kind of is. Um, the next one is going to be Bundle Arcanine. I like this one a lot as well. Uh, what's cool about this is you have the Intimidate um, added with the fact that you have that icy win. Remember, our, we made our Arcanine exclusively to work off these plus one, minus one calc. So again, if they don't have dynamic speed control from prankster tornadoes and stuff like that you're going to be able to just lead this and like you see the mirror match you see their arcanine and you can tell them their arcanine slower than me icy wind drops your arcanine speed banded rock slide banded head smash just kills their arcanine immediately easy peasy lemon squeezy they're also going to have a hard time breaking your bundle because you have that uh, intimidate built in so intimidate plus speed control yeah and a lot of these things a lot of these leads are built off traits you may be thinking like that's plus one you're seeing all these things are so good but like Every time I try an icy when they just kill me, it's like, cool, well, that's a trade, right? So like when they icy, when they when they kill you, if you icy one of them first and kill their teammate, well, now their other mon has like a minus one speed drop. So then you have a free bring in your flutter, a free bring in your urshi, a free bring in your torrent to reactivate another mon speed control. And from there, you're trading. You're going like one for one, you know, you know, two for two, one for none into a two for O oh the next turn. It's all about regaining board state. And that's the thing this team does very, very well. You gotta be okay, which is losing mons but knowing full well that you got the speed control up and now they're big pinned. So that's the whole point. Um, up next, we just did bundle Arcanine. We're gonna do bundle Urshi. It's the same thing. And these S tier weeds are in no particular order, but it's speed control uh, that breaks protect because Urshifu's unseen fist. So they can't actually protect. They act the only way to actually avoid this one is to just pivot. And if you're swapping, you're getting those Zats plus ones free turns and doing anything you want with them. You can put a swords dance on that turn. You know, you can you could do whatever you freaking want and just absolutely roll people. So we're on to Indity. We have Indity Flutter. We'll put this in the Esther as well. And I could just put anything in the Esther, but I, I'm, I'm trying to give you guys the reasons 
why I think these are really, really good. These are all things like I would hate to fight against, right? Anyone would. What is What makes this good? Redirection plus AOE damage. So if your opponent sees the fact that you have these torrents, you have these bundles, they're gonna try and match you with that speed control. They're gonna be like, I'm gonna trade Tailwinds and I'm having even faster Mon. Well, it's like, okay. So while you're trading Tailwinds with me with your Urshifu and your Torn, I have my bundle Flutter, I go redirection, I redirect your Sturgeon Strikes. Yes, you got up the Tailwind, but I got a double KO with a Specs Dazzling Gleam, because you remember you took some chip damage on your Urshifu from your Surging Strikes. And then I just bring out my Torn, and then I just set more speed control, or I bring out my bundle and get more speed control that way. I basically get a one for two into more speed control and end the game in two turns, right? So good. Redirection with this Flutter, you, you're raising the bar. They got to be this tall to ride. You guys can, you know, recreate these situations in your games as well. It's super, super good. Into the Arcanine. It's the same thing as the Flutter, but on the physical side, right? Redirection plus AOE physical damage. And this is, again, has the Intimidate built in, so your Entity lives even more physical attacks, and you have the Psychic Train built in, so you block uh, those big fake outs, so you don't have to worry about it. We're disabling our opponent's ability to even have an impact on the game. Right? And so you have Intimi plus, um, sorry, Intimi. I can't even type. Timmy plus, uh, and again, what happens when the entity goes down to the Arcanine goes down? Bring out your Torn, set the Tailwind, set it for your last Mana Queen up in the back. Really, really good stuff. We have Entity Urshifu. It's the exact same thing. It's different than the Arcanine, right? It's different than the Arcanine, but I really like this one because it does something a little bit different. Three direction plus swords dance and then if you know they're going to be protecting you know they're going to be swapping in that gas round swapping in that water pond redirection we'll just do that until entity dies swords dance then bring out your torn and then you just close combat surge strikes away easy peasy lemon squeezy dude oh my gosh it's so it's so much damage it's the best flutter arcanine i think that's still an a tier lead or sorry i think it's still an s tier lead it's like, didn't that just like win like the past like three regionals? Um, Flutter Arc is just really, really good. Uh, Intimi plus AOE damage. Now this doesn't have any speed control, but against like those fat teams, against like Heatran, Hands, um, Ogre Ponds, this, you just kind of leave with this and be like, bro, yeah, we're, we're out here. We're, we're doing this stuff right now. You also can pivot in. Uh, yes, we don't have protects. We're a little bit pinned, but I think this is still a really, really good weed um, just because you deal a ton of damage. You mitigate a ton of damage, and you still have any of your pivots that you want. You can pivot in your entity. You can pivot in your bundle. Pivot in your torn and mitigate some damage. I like it a lot. Um, and then Flutter Urshi. Flutter Urshi is good. I think the Flutter Urshi is an A-tier weed um, because... I, I think the Intimidate on the Arcanine is actually very, very valuable. But then you have the Arcanine in the back, so it's kind of nice. So you go Flutter... I think Urshi not having speed control, it makes it just a little bit too exposed. Arcanine's chonky, Urshi we still a sweeper set. So Flutter Urshi is a bit too exposed, but still good. Because they can't protect to block the Flutter set, they actually have to pivot, and then from there you can do kind of whatever you want. And then from there, Arcanine Urshifu, I'm going to put that uh, back up. I'm going to put that in A. And again, it's because there's no speed control attached to it. And the reason is it's susceptible to intimidate. And there's no speed control. So it's okay. Um, in some matchups, it's a pretty good weed because it's kind of like a race at the finish. If your opponent wants to just not have like a speed control board at all, like against like Trick Room, you can dip into these A tier weeds. Um, because like, what is it? If they're using like banded entity, right? Or not banded entity, sorry. If they're using like entity armors, you can just be like, pop, pop. Bro, like, I don't need Tailwind. I can just go with my all-in damage mons and just roll you over. So knowing that there are still situations where this is good is the right play. This team has no B-tier weeds. All the weeds are good. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all 15. With most of them being uh, the S-tier weeds. Which, if you remember, back when we built this whole team, one of the three things we want this team to do, easy to use speed control. You hit your Tailwind into like getting a couple ice winds off if you can and feature very very fast pokemon like booster energy iron bundle from there we want redirection to close out games against big single target attackers like shempow like dragonite like uh 
you know, King Gambit, like Urshifu, things like that. I think it's going to be very good. Force your opponent to go into those AoE. When they have to use AoE, those do a little bit less damage. We can mitigate that a little bit easier. And then have multiple S-tier lead options. Make our team as easy as possible to, uh, as, to use and give ourselves the most amount of value. Um, and force our opponent to meet us at a very, very high level of tempo play. This is a good example um, on paper of what a hyper-aggressive team would look like, in my opinion. So we, again, we have all these different things this team can do correctly. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys got this far, again, thank you so much. Think about leaving a like. Think about dropping a sub. I would also say, you know, the question of the day is, uh, are you excited for the Indigo Disc? What new returning mods features are, have you the most excited? Let me know. I actually haven't really looked into the Indigo Disc that much, but I know there's a lot of uh, YouTubers that have access to it early to do like review videos and stuff like that. So let me know if you've seen any of those, what you're most excited about. And also let me know if, if there's anything I could be doing better in these team building guides, please take the time to let me know. Uh, do you want to see more battles? Do you want to see better explanations for the flowcharts? Do you want to see me feature different, more Mimi Mons? The teams that I've been doing these three guides for have all been tournament level, you know, best of three teams that I personally would take to like mid seasons and regionals, right? So I'm doing my best to help you guys be the best players you can and bring you all the way up to like a high level instead of just using the joke mons. Yes, we could probably find a way to use the joke mons. And if you want to see those, let me know. But I'm doing my best to actually help everyone be the best players they can be. So if that's what you guys like seeing, or if you have ideas on what could be done better, please let me know in the comments. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out, and I'll see you guys next time.